Welcome, Tuesday. That means it's time for a tutorial, and today we're taking a look at matcha. So a big, nasty cup of green powder all over your face. We're talking about gasless trading. It's going to be a big one. But first, a message from our sponsors. Do you want to get actionable insights and find new investment opportunities before everyone else? Nansen is a blockchain analytics platform tracking more than 100 million wallet addresses. Make informed decisions on your yield farming and investments through dashboards like hot contracts, smart money, and NFT paradise, and follow the smart money. See who's aped into an NFT collection or farm, and look into the behavior of money flows on chain. Sign up now at nansen.ai and become a smarter investor today. Siren is a decentralized platform for trading cryptocurrency options. And for those that don't know options that well, as a trader, you can participate in market upside while limiting your risk by buying options on your favorite DeFi tokens. As a liquidity provider, passively earn rewards when people bet on the markets. And you can also earn rewards from the option premiums and SI rewards themselves. Siren removes the middleman and gives the power to run markets directly to you, the DeFi community. So to trade DeFi options or become a liquidity provider, check out Siren by clicking the link in the description. So Matcha is a product we haven't covered yet on this channel. And that's a shame because it's actually kind of cool. If you think of one inch and the way it aggregates liquidity from across lots of different protocols, it, Magic kind of does the same thing, but it's built using uh, 0x and it's built by the team that built 0x. And 0x is like one of those proper OG DEX protocols. I remember back in 2017, it was considered like just one of the hottest properties like Kyber, like Bancor. It was the thing that was going to kickstart a revolution in decentralized trading. As we know, Uniswap is actually where that whole movement has begun. But we're starting to see more and more things being built on Xerox. And the Xerox team has built Matcha. So what is Matcha exactly? Well, it's a consumer-facing decentralized exchange built by Xerox. And it aggregates liquidity across lots of different protocols, uh, such as Xerox itself, Uniswap, Balancer, Curve, Kuiper, Oasis, and many, many more. And the way to think about Xerox is it's just a way for trading to be possible um, using decentralized entities. Did that explain it particularly well? Like Uniswap is a, is a DEX, Xerox is a protocol that allows trading to happen in a nice way, basically. But what Match is cool at is they focus on education. So if you click on a on a token, it will give you some information about that token, it will give you a bit of chart action, and it will give you a link to the contract as well. So it's not just there's the trade, it gives you a little bit more insight into what you're doing as well. It's kind of like having a tiny little piece of CoinGecko on the page at the same time as well. And the other thing that Match is all about is just ease of use. The UX has been very carefully designed to be kind of friendly, but also sophisticated. And it's very, very nice to use, it's very, very easy to use. And this is what it looks like. So you can see what I'm talking about here, kind of a little bit of chart action. I mean, if you use Coinbase, kind of looks the same to this as well. Uh, but you have things like limit orders here, not on every single pair, you have to have them on wrapped ETH, but you've got limit orders in a DEX, which is nice. Uh, there's also an OTC option as an easy way to convert ETH to WEETH uh, on uh, Matcha. And if you've ever used OpenSea, similar kind of thing, just a very simple way of converting ETH to ETH. And if you don't know why you would ever use wrapped ETH rather than ETH, it's very, very simple. ETH is not an ERC-20 token. Wrapped ETH is. And ERC-20 tokens allow you to do things and engage, uh, interact with smart contracts in ways that the ETH token itself cannot. Simple as that. So the thing about Matcha is that they have now announced gasless trading. And if you think of one of the great barriers to decentralized finance, it is the cost of the gas. If you eliminate the cost of the gas, then presumably all of that goes away. Now, the thing about gas is it's a sliding scale. It can blow up at any moment and uh, become incredibly expensive. What Matcha is promising, although it is in an open beta at the moment, is that you can trade on Ethereum with no gas fees, no slimmage, and no MEV. I did say slimmage, yes slippage, and no MEV. The question is, how? Well, here's how. You basically have this sort of simple workflow. You, the trader, want to trade wrapped ETH versus USDC. Normally, how you do that is through liquid uh, aggregated liquidity pool. So what it will do is it will search for the best price across, say, Uniswap or uh, Kyber, wherever the best price is. That'll, that's where it will find the liquidity for you to execute that trade, and off you go. 
Running in parallel to that is another pool of liquidity that's run by professional market makers. So when you execute a trade, you've got an option, not on all pairs, but on some, to go for gasless trading. And then Matcha will then go ahead and return you a price, a slippage-free price from professional market makers. Now, they're actually doing this anyway when you go to the aggregated liquidity pool. It's just it's all bundled up with everything else that's going on. But for the um, gasless trade, it's only coming from those professional market makers. And we'll take a look at how that works in a second. But these pools are running in parallel with each other. The thing about the professional market makers is they're not connected to the market in any way. They're just giving you a price. So you're saying, I want to trade. It's kind of like going to a, um, a bureau de change at the airport. You just go in there, say, I want to ex exchange this, and then that's what happens. There are some caveats to this. We'll get back to that. So let's go ahead and look at Matcha and how that might work. So here is the Matcha exchange. We can start trading. And what we want to look for is the Weath USDC pair because that does have gasless trading. Now, some pairs, gasless trading is only available for $5,000. But if we wanted to trade, say, 1,000 USDC, we would have an option down here for gasless trading. If we wanted to trade 999, we would not. So 1,000 is the limit here. So like with any other trade, you'll see the network fee. Gas is, well, the network isn't that congested right now. So we're seeing a network fee of $22. But still, $22 on a trade of $1,000 is still quite a big chunk, and you wouldn't necessarily want to pay that. So what we can do is we can click on the Enable Gasless trade, and then it will tell us that it's free. Interesting. Let's click that back off and see what's going on here. So if I look at the information kind of rollover here, for the normal trade, it will tell us that we're trading on SushiSwap, it's 100% sushi swap. So the whole trade is going through sushi, sushi swap. Sushi swap. And we are getting this price, which is 0.30118. Now, let's see what happens if we enable the gases trade. You will see that the price takes a hit, 0.290482. And if we roll over this, it will tell us that it's coming from 0x. Now, you can get trades through 0x without using gasless, but if you're using gasless, it will only come from 0x. So that's that. So it will tell you that there's zero price slippage and the expected rate will be the expected rate. That's it. But it's lower than you would get if you do gasless. Why is that? Well, let's go back to some criticism of matches gasless trading. Uh, Ryan Garner says it works by giving you a worse price. It's probably cheaper to just save gas. I have to use a calculator to find out how much I'm getting overcharged for this. This is misleading users, a large portion of which falsely think they're saving money. Be transparent and show the fee. So as we saw there, there was there was a bit of a price hit when it came to the uh, the gasless option. Now we were looking at quite a small trade. I can imagine that if you're putting together quite a large trade, which some people now are, that this option of gasless plus the ability to avoid MEV attacks would actually become quite attractive. Uh, Rhino David, who responds to this, says, Rhino, thanks for the feedback. would love to ex better explain how this works a little better. So in the traditional swap, one of the sources of liquidity OX uses is a pool of professional market makers, like we said before. Zero X gets a quote from each market maker and compares them along with quotes from on-chain AMMs to get you the best price possible, including adjustments for AMM, slippage, and different gas costs across protocol. What he goes on to say is that basically the gases experience takes away the risk that the person in the account, that the person is putting, looking to put through the trade, would sit on the quote for 30 or 60 seconds or so. And in that time, the whole market is moved. And the, yeah, there isn't a great response here. They say the upshot is the gases experience will get you a better deal, all things considered. Uh, will it? Will it though? So yes, you can trade gasless. You can take advantage of a liquidity pool that sits exterior to the other forces that you might be accustomed to on... AMMs, but 
bear in mind that the price will take a hit. Now, you have to figure out for yourself whether that price is worth taking a hit for. Uh, at the moment, for $20 or whatever it is for the network fee, uh, but let's say that network fee was more like you know, $500, then maybe this would make a lot more sense. So it really is dependent on market conditions. What's great, though, is that we do have that option. Uh, does this start to sound like it's more like a centralized exchange? Yes, doesn't it? Just a little bit. The moment you say professional market makers, isn't that where we're heading? So, okay, great. It's a nice option to have. It's an interesting option to have. But what does it mean? Uh, in terms of usability? I don't know. Uh, so if you uh, end up using Gasus trading, do drop us a note and let us know how you get on with it because I suspect that the advantages at a lower scale probably aren't that great, but you might see when things start to get really heated up in the market and we see 400, 500 in gas, it could be well worth using this. But anyway, Matcha, uh, is a lovely exchange to use. It's a very user-friendly exchange to use, and it's nice to see them continually upgrading and adding new products. And if, if they could do gases, then presumably everybody else can do gases as well. So that was our look at the match the gas is trading. If you have a suggestion for a tutorial, drop it in the comments below. Of course, get all your DeFi news fix on the Defiant.io. We've got lots of other videos coming up this week. So to avoid missing those, you know, get notified, subscribe, hit the like button, all of that stuff. Friday and Tuesday this week, we're going to have our pack films, pack part two and pack part three. Some really crazy stuff that happened as a result of researching those. And it has something to do with this. I will see you on the next one. Have a great week. Peace.